We have studied uh, rice paddy production uh, in sub-Saharan Africa over the last few years, uh, putting particular emphasis on what happened before and after the rice crisis. The rice crisis is uh, uh, something people still remember very well because prices of rice went through the roof in 2008. And as a response to that, uh, there have been a lot of initiatives uh, at government level from the International Donor Committee community to, uh, to boost Africa's rice sector. So uh, it was very interesting to look at paddy production before and after the crisis. And what we found is really very interesting. Uh, before the rice crisis, so before 2008, uh, rice production grew by about 3%. But if you look at what happened after the rice crisis, 2008, rice production grew by 8.4%. It's fantastic, uh, spectacular. About 5 million tons of paddy between 2007 and 2012 in addition. Now, of course, it's very important to understand why that is. So we looked first at average yield levels, uh, actually just looking at total production of paddy divided by harvested area. And then we really found something, I think, spectacular. Because what we saw is, if you go even back to 1960, if you take the uh, average yield growth rate uh, in sub-Saharan Africa from 1960 to 2007, the increase is about 10 kilos per hectare per year. But if you look at what happened between 2007 and 2012, uh, we're looking at an average yield increase of 110 kilos per hectare per year. So we're looking at a very spectacular jump from 10 kilos per hectare per year before the rice crisis to 110 kilos per hectare per year after the rice crisis. I think that is really a very spectacular jump. And on average, if you look at the period between 2007 and 2012, after the rice crisis, that translates into a jump of 30% uh, uh, increase in rice yield. We also looked then quickly at um, the percentage um, of service area expansion and average yield increase. Uh, both are the, these are the two factors contributing to paddy production. Before the rice crisis, about 70% could be explained by expansion of area. And actually, after the rice crisis, it's the opposite. Only 30% is due to expansion of harvested area, and about 70, I think even 75% is due to yield increase. So what you see is clear evidence of intensification of use of innovation. Of course, then the question is, uh, why? What, what is happening here? As I said already before, it's clearly, I think, due to the efforts of national governments and the international donor community to boost the rice sector, and it seems to be working. Now what has been done is make sure that farmers have better access to seed of improved varieties. In many cases, there have been uh, subsidies on mineral fertilizer. Governments have also started to rehabilitate, rehabilitate irrigation schemes, introducing better water control measures in lowlands, and also some mechanization, bringing in power tillers uh, for land preparation, small tools for weeding, and also mechanization for harvest and post-harvest um, processes. So I think. This mix of different initiatives seem to be uh, paying off. Now, um, what is uh, important is to look at where actually in Sub-Saharan Africa we see these increases. It's mainly in West Africa and Madagascar. You don't see this trend yet in, in Central Africa and also not really that clearly in East Africa. So we see really something uh, changing in West Africa and Madagascar. Um, are these now the first signs of a green revolution? People ask me that all the time. I think, honestly, you can't compare Africa with Asia. Uh, green, revolution, green revolution in Asia was based on irrigated systems. Africa is mainly rain-fed. Africa is still very much low input. So, um, probably what we're seeing is based on increased performance in different growth environments. Upland, rain-fed lowland, and also irrigated systems. But we really have to look at that in more detail to understand what, what is happening. But uh, I think the, the trends are really very uh, encouraging. And what I think is very important that when Africa, as we now see, Africa rice systems, as we now see, is intensifi intensifying, is that we learn from the Green Revolution in Asia and that we make sure that when we bring in inputs, external inputs like fertilizer, herbicides, we do that in a most efficient manner that is good for the environment and it's also good for profitability. So we can learn many things from what went well and what didn't go that well in Asia, uh, in Africa. Now this, this finding is of course extremely important because um, 
Africa is currently importing, uh, I think even in 2012, almost 12 million tons now. That is due to several factors. It used to hover around 9 to 10 million tons. Uh, that is a huge amount of rice that is being imported in Africa. It's very costly. And in fact, uh, all the resources, land, water, people, are here in Africa to produce that rice locally. And of, it, it would really boost uh, the economy of African countries if we start using that potential, realizing that potential. And the fact that we now see signs of intensification, uh, more efficient use of land, more efficient use of labor, I hope, uh, means that we are starting to produce that rice uh, locally. And we need to keep up that trend because Africa cannot rely on the world market to import 12 million tons and perhaps in the future even 20, 30 million tons. If you look at the demand for rice in Africa, uh, up to 2035, worldwide we need to produce about 135 million tons of milled rice and about a third of that will have to be produced in Africa and again a third of that for a country like Nigeria. So really we have to boost Africa's rice sector and, and realize that potential that is here.